had happened also in uh, it had been sunk twice. Yeah. He also had been sunk in in uh, by the Japanese. He should have bought a lottery ticket. Yes, if they yes, had him. yes. <laughs> He's a lucky guy. Yeah. All right, let's let's go to Q. Uh, Mape Q, are you out there? Can you hear us? Are we coming across? I'm out here, Jim. Hello, everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah, Q, we have uh, Paul and uh, Nathan here, and I'm here, Q. Okay, so where are you? You are out on a mission. I know it. Well, actually, I am in Portland right now, so I'm near oh. Gresham in Portland. Oh, okay. you should have come have to you, the studio. Have you ever heard of the name Rip Caswell, R-I-P, Caswell, C-A-S-W-E-L-L? Sounds familiar. Uh, I know some Caswells, but I don't know a Rip Caswell. Yeah. My fiance's maiden name is Caswell, so this is interesting. Yeah, maybe another clue, Troutdale, Oregon. Okay, we 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 got to be careful not to give away private information here, but go ahead. Oh, that that's okay. Um, he's okay. not a very private person. Okay. okay. He's a, he is a sculpturer. Oh. Hmm. And you want to guess what he gets to do? Well, actually, he's already done it. Ooh. He is making the m- memorial piece for Admiral Nimitz. He is doing the the uh, man-sized sculpture of Admiral Nimitz. Yeah, wow, that's wow. great. That's great. Yeah. And, and it's his whole his role, you know, his name is Chester W. Nimitz. Okay. Well, uh, you know, the United are... States Navy. He was a fleet admiral of the United States Navy. He held the dual command of Commander-in-Chief, United States Pacific Fleet for U.S. Naval Forces, and Commander-in-Chief. Well, so, for, for what years did he do that, Q? Pardon me? What years did he hold that title? Uh, let me take a look and see if I can find out. He died in 1966. He was born in 1885. Okay. Ooh. Well, then he could have um, actually t- himself also fought in, in World War I as well. He might yeah. have. Mm. Mm. I, so I would assume he had. Yeah. Because um, he would have been 20. He would have probably been out of uh, West Point by then. I, th- I think you're right. Or uh, uh, in uh, Annapolis, excuse me. God, uh, the, don't, the Navy people don't write in. I'm sorry for the slip. <laughs> Let's not, uh, I don't want the hate, uh, the hate mail. It, was, it wasn't our show, it was Nathan. No, it was my fault. I'm sorry, I made a slip, not <laughs> West Point. Yeah, from okay. the Office of Chief of Naval Operations and received his um, third gold, and that was on December 15th, 1946. Seven. Oh, okay. So when did he become? When did Roosevelt appoint him uh, uh, a commander in chief, basic chief of staff for for the for the military? When was that? Q. If he, so he he started uh, he started uh, around uh, after Eisenhower. Then uh, after I, well, he was part of the chief of the Navy's bureau. I'm just kind of looking just mm-hmm. skimming through here. Chief of the Navy's bureau of navigation in 1939. He served as chief naval operations from 1945 until 1947. Okay. He was the United States' last surviving fleet admiral. Okay. Yes. So, so anyhow, so, yeah, today Q, I was ahead. at a foundry past Boeing in the Boeing, Oregon area. Okay. And I got to witness as the final piece. For the statue, life-size statue got poured, and that was the head. Oh, oh wow. So wow, where funny. I was perched watching all of this, the temperature was over 120 degrees. I was sweating. Oh, oh I bet well, you were. It's uh, out already. Oh, go ahead, Ken. So, you know, that was pretty interesting. And this particular statue is going to go, guess where? What? Hawaii. Oh, oh okay. it's going to be a permanent fixture at the memorial out there. That's okay. Then. There is a second one that's being put together. It's going to go to Texas, where there is a World War II museum. It's actually called the uh, Pacific War Museum. Oh. Well, I know that the Bushes had some hand in, in doing that because, uh, of course, Big Daddy Bush served uh, and landed off of aircraft carriers. 
So I know that that is also a good, wonderful thing that they have done at, uh, com, uh, it, for this country is help support that effort. Go ahead, Q. Even though I'm not a Republican and don't like the, the Bushes, but I just want to say that's a nice thing they did for this country. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Q. Okay, I'm having trouble here with my net. Anyhow, on I'm trying to bring it up here. Before the statue goes all the way to Hawaii, people here get to view it for a oh, while. That'd be nice. There's going to be a ceremony on the 31st of July, and the statue's actually before that particular ceremony. It's going to be at a park in Troutdale for at least a week. Okay. For everybody to view before it heads out. And, you know, oh. who knows how often people can make it to fly to see it. Okay. So, oh. wait, kill yeah. the page. So I'm you talking were... to myself because I keep I've been having hardware issues lately. Um, oh. So I've got new memory on order. So the computer's just constantly. Well, everybody's what... been having uh, email <laughs> and computer issues and all of that. So you're not uh, <laughs> yeah. with the NSA issues, yeah. Q. So, so, so Q, uh, you know so... it's frustrating because you know I work on computers and I know when it's trouble. And you know <laughs> some of the trouble is just a matter of having money and buying new parts. Um, yeah. So, no, okay. Anyhow, that's going to be in Troutdale, and I believe the date was uh, the 31st. Now, if you guys check in on my World War II War Heroes website, mm -hmm. in a few days I should have some pictures posted from the uh, pouring today and some other wow. pictures that I've shot yeah. of the uh, the uh, initial <laughs> clay statue. Mock the mock-up of it? Yeah, but, you know, there's a... I, I don't even know everything that went down because there's a whole process of this. This sculpture is really good, mm. you know. And I, I was looking at the statue today, and most of it, and uh, the detail is so great. This guy is good. Mm. Um, does, does it so, look yeah, like that, like that's it, going to be it, happening? And you know, I uh, encourage folks to come out and see it. Does it? Do you think? Be great. Do you think it looks like uh, how uh, Admiral Nimitz looks? Yeah, and you know. I like the details, like in his shirt. Ah, Sounds mm. strange, but I like the details. I like the way some of the shirts just kind of is he in his? Out. You know, it, is it's he a in very his dress? natural looking. This does not look what we would call a posed uh, vision of the admiral. Mm. So, and along with the statue, though, I guess he likes to play horseshoes too, because uh, a horseshoe form was. Uh, Put today also, and there'll be a horseshoe that'll be standing next to, sitting next to his base. Oh, okay. So the whole thing weighs at about five hundred and thirty pounds. Ooh. as much wow. as my motorcycle. Okay. Ooh. So you would have thought that the admiral would have been heavier for a bronze statue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would have guessed two thousand pounds. Yes, yeah, so I would have thought maybe five thousand or yeah. something. Oh man, you guys are really cranking up. Yeah, the well, I yeah. mean, I've seen the reproductions uh, from the original mold of the Thinker, oh. and that thing was, you know, but that's a much bigger statue. But this is supposed to be a life-size statue and a, a life image of the the admiral. You would say, Q, or how would you describe it more specifically to the listeners? Sorry, I'm having a little on. Uh, this is yeah. This is supposed to be a life. This is life size. Uh, Actually, I, I would. You know, I don't know how big the admiral was. Okay. Maybe it's a little larger than him. Uh -huh. But if I were to st when I stand up close to it, remove the base. Yeah, it's it's life size. So. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Well, that's great. Wow. So it's a, a very light. It's a very much of a likeness of the admiral. Then. Mm. That is correct. I've been looking at some pictures, and yes. But what I find interesting is that in our own backyard, Boring, Oregon, there yes. is there is a sculptor around us that is that talented that was chosen to do this work. I think that's fantastic well, to know we, that. We've had uh, some... The sculpture is from Troutdale. Oh, from Troutdale, okay. We, we've had the some... foundry. Oh, the, the foundry. In... The foundry, or whatever it's called, yeah. is actually also owned by the same man. And oh. that's located in Boring, Oregon. Okay, mm. all right. That's where I got the Boring yeah. part. Okay. Yeah, is there some story as to why Oregon uh, has been chosen, or or how did it? Well, okay, uh, you know, I think I saw he's got a uh, studio there that you can visit uh, um, there on the main street in Troutdale, 
You can go in there. As a matter of fact, it's easy to recognize oh, because outside of the studio, I think you see a bronze cowboy yes. and a big uh, bronze. Uh, it's not a deer. It's that thing with the big white horns on it. Mm-hmm. One of those animals out there. So you can, you know, spot uh-huh. it. But when I walked into the first time on the 14th um, to look at the, the, uh, the initial clay thing, uh, I noticed a very familiar small replica of another statue that I've seen. And I think it was in Bend, and it was a, uh, a memorial dedicated to a fallen hero out there. Hmm. And then I noticed that he's done some other ones for our heroes. So, oh. you know, I guess the uh, government that got, got whiff of his work, uh, he, he's very passionate in what he does, so... And uh, they got a whiff on it, and they commissioned they commissioned him to do this. Well, I know that there are. Uh, we've had a lot of fine artists. I know of one that is a, a famous uh, sculptor as well that's come out of uh, Oregon, and uh, so we do. We are on the map for this, and I I knew a fellow that was an art broker that he he also had some dealings with the foundry, and we of course have a lot of art glass here. So this is a, a common. Thing and it's great that Oregon once again is on the mm-hmm. on the vanguard mm-hmm. of of this uh, and and this man has been honored with such a great uh, tribute to those soldiers of World War Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Q. Uh, next week uh, coming up is the Fourth of July Independence Day weekend. Uh, s- s- some thoughts looking ahead here. Well, you know I'm not that far ahead yet. Oh, um, okay. I've been. We don't have any plans or a party. Busy, so I don't know what exactly I'll be doing yet. Um, we've lost another kid from the Northwest, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. is from Kennewick, Washington. Oh, my family's from there. I have my my uncle is uh, as a, one of the works for the city over there, and I have family in in there. Oh, that's sad to yeah. hear. Go ahead, Q. So anyhow, um, because I, my memory is just, my head's gone really bad. But anyhow, <laughs> he's coming in on the 29th, last I heard, and his service is going to be on the 1st in uh, Kennewick. Mm-hmm. That's sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. and Okay, you... his name is Specialist Robert W. Ellis, E-L-L-I-S. His age is 21, mm-hmm. Kennewick, uh, Washington. So. Uh, you know, I knew some uh, Ellis's from that area, and over in Spo- I, I said I knew some Ellis's from that area and in Spokane. <laughs> I hope it isn't uh, a relative of these people. Yeah. You know, I don't know why we don't have more support out there for all our men and women because it is truly a small world. Yes. yes. Well, I know I know some people that are Ellis's wow. in that area and in Spokane, and uh, you know. Uh, so it could possibly be, and it worries me. Uh, and but and I haven't spoken yeah. to those guys in years. I, I just have lost contact. Probably on Facebook, I think. I think they might be uh, on Facebook. But but, but it's uh, a small world. Yes, it is, especially in the Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. You know, I've yeah. I've known uh, this would be, if this is the case, this would be the second veteran that I've known mm-hmm. uh, had a connection to, and who who have known that has died. Uh, Paul, I'm sure you, you got a comment. Uh, Want to get in here? Anything? Well, um, I think uh, I agree with Q. I think um, uh, we are kind of put out. We're like in proportionate to the people. We don't have uh, maybe a personal tie with them, but the one tie that we all have with them is they're a fellow citizen of this country. And yeah, when it, when anybody when it, whenever any soldier uh, falls is fallen. In a line of duty, I think it's. I agree with Q. We should take it to heart more so, and uh, take pause in our day, and th- be thankful for what we have, and be thankful for men and women like those that are selfless, that choose to be part of uh, our armed forces. So I, I, I appreciate all that they do and all that they give, and I just wish I got, I agree with Q. I think we need to. Uh, take more time to honor these folks and I, I'm just glad there's someone out there like Q mm-hmm. that's taken upon himself to take these pictures to you know be very involved with the families of the fallen and just uh, do his piece of the puzzle and I think we all could be yeah we all could participate with a piece of the puzzle and that's being uh, more honorable 
to the people that are following and just uh, be more sovereign about it. Go ahead, Q. I argued with another TV station recently when I, um, okay, i got to clean this up. When I complained about them not talking about all the recent deaths that we've had in Afghanistan, it says, well, they're not from out here. I said, that doesn't matter because 99.999% of the soldiers that enlist Enlist to fight for this whole country, not just the state of Texas or New Jersey or California, but this whole country. And I think everybody should should at least mention their names and says, look, this hero just gave the all for all of us, including Oregon, New Jersey, whatever. Well, and I want to say something I even fur- I want to say something even further. All of us, including Oregon, New Jersey, whatever. Mm. Well, I want to say something even further. I want to say something even further that in this country we have not really sacrificed for the war like they have in the past. They did you got not, that right. You know, they did not. People felt the pinch uh, in Vietnam a little bit, and mm-hmm. they certainly felt the pinch in World War II because there was rationing, and we don't have that. And right. why is if this is such a, a serious issue, which it is. Uh, puts our, our our country in danger to to bring that to to a, a closure so that we have some stability there. Uh, we're in a situation where we all, as a nation, have to sacrifice to achieve that goal, and um, we're not feeling it like we used to, and that's not right because that means that we can just sit back and watch our reality television and stuff our face at uh, whatever hamburger joint mm-hmm. we want and not have to be responsible for the fact that we have men and women out there that are giving their lives, and Q, thank goodness you're out there documenting that, have given their lives for this country so that we don't have a terrorist bomb on our, our thing, so we don't have 9-11 again, uh, so that yeah. we uh, don't, uh, hopefully, uh, the, the government stops conspiring with certain people, and, and hopefully they catch the people that have let off bombs here in Portland. Yeah. Uh, you know, Q. a sad fact that just was released by DOD recently was that we're losing at least one a day to suicide. And I have some, sometimes wondered how many of the suicides are caused because nobody cares. Bingo. Mm, yeah. Uh, Q, just you take know, one minute. Especially our guys coming home, man. Uh, Q, take people one People are not, you know, people not caring. People not helping him. It is well, it's such traumatic. a waste of such a good resource in many cases. You know, I I, I have a I have a, a friend that he was uh, uh, in Iraq and he told me just the horrible things about it and he you know he, he's tra- traumatized from that uh, you know and uh, but you know he's getting help he's getting better and he's doing well actually uh, now but you know what I mean like it was horrific for him you know he used to be a teacher and then he's in iraq having to fear that kids are going to kill him with a grenade and so he can't be a teacher anymore because he's scared to death of these kids oh my you know i mean you know that's that's not right yeah uh cue cue up go ahead no i that's i said it's very real and very you know um, prominent so you know what can i say it's sad. It's, 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 it's pathetic in many cases. Yes, tragic. But you know, as 4th of July comes up now, I remember that's when we uh, celebrate our freedoms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think everybody should crack out the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and a few other things and do some reading. Yes, reading would be good. Because I tell you what, I think a lot of people are laying back and letting this country be rolled over by someone else. I think the president that's currently in office should do that this 4th of July, maybe. Maybe he should yes. read the Constitution well, for he's once. he's supposed to be a constitutional lawyer, and he certainly uh, has not, uh, in my okay, opinion, now, has now not you behaved you that way. You use a Q word that's called lawyer. Okay? <laughs> lawyer is another yes. word that starts with an yes. L. So, uh, yes. Anyhow, yes, I wasn't going to get into that because <laughs> that would just make me because angry. That and would, I'm uh, not so nobody have a can of worms considering we get federal funding. I would just funding. like people to think about what it means to be a free country, what our Constitution is all about, and don't let idiots redefine the Constitution for you. Read it yourself. See what it says. Don't get it reinterpreted by someone else. And fight for it. Yeah. Stand up. Support your troops. 
vote some people in that actually believe in this country that aren't there to make a big buck and rip you over and sell you out to others. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yes, yes, you know, yes, yes. Let's bring freedom back to this country. I'm, I'm serious, man. It's getting really sad. Well, I agree with you. Uh, that's too. why I'm doing my uh, my letter writing campaign. I'm going out. I'm collecting signatures. Uh, it's a demand letter from the government, similar to the resolution I passed at the Democratic Party, uh, which is Article Nine, Section Seventeen of the DNC Charter. Very similar to that. It's a little bit more extensive. So, but I agree. Everyone needs to start getting involved and let not. Perhaps, you know, the ones that say World War II or Korean War or whatever. You see one of those geezers out there, go up to him, say thank you for serving and thank you for helping to defend this country so we can, you know, celebrate yeah, the 4th of I July. Agree. Yeah, I mean, Q, seriously, Q, it isn't Q, hard at all. Q, say that again about reaching out to the veterans, the older ones. Say that again, please. And when you see one of those geezers out there, a lot of times you can tell, you know, wearing a World War II hat or even a... Korean War hat, Vietnam hat, you name it. Go up to them. Tell them, thank you for serving. Thank you because of people like you, we can celebrate such a day as the 4th of July and freedom in this country. And, and it's really not that hard. And, hey, if you see him in a restaurant, you got a spare buck, buy him a coffee or buy him a meal. Yep, exactly. Quietly. I agree. I agree. And, and for any of the veterans that have returned, uh, just be an ear and listen to them uh, and, and give, give, show them a little warmth and symphony, just, symphony, s- sympathy uh, just, as a, just as a human being. Just and respect. And, and if you would like a recent reminder of the current cost of freedom, please visit IraqWarHeroes.org. And take a look at the names of young young men and women that have given it all recently. I've yeah. currently got 6,897 names listed. Hmm. Scroll down slowly. You will see that is a lot of people. That yeah. is a lot of families. Yes, that it is. That is a big price to pay. It may not be as many as in the past. But that shouldn't matter. That, that doesn't matter, Q. One too many. That's right. It's one too many. I agree. Q, Q, hold that thought for one minute. The views and opinions on this show are those of the host, the guests, and the live callers. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Portland <laughs> State University, KPSU Radio, or the participating sponsors. Q, some final thoughts here on that subject. Hey, thank you for your show, and uh, thank you for what you're doing for fathers and families out there. Mm-hmm. Thanks for giving me some uh, air time on here. I'd uh, like to thank all the service members out there and everybody else that helps keep this country a free country, yeah. an open country, and helps mm-hmm. defend our Constitution. Yeah, and Q, it would be wonderful if you could be on our show ahead of Labor Day and touch veterans' issues and employment issues and things we can do to welcome welcome the veterans back. Yo, shoot me off an email. Yeah. That's the only way I get reminded because yeah. I forget almost everything. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for all the work you are doing. Q does this at uh, just at no charge. It's all uh, a charitable act for him, all the work that he does uh, to help the families uh, of the fallen. Uh, get that website out there again where people can... can can, uh, you can go to IraqWarHeroes.org or go to OurWarHeroes.org. As a matter of fact, I got a little link on the right side if you'd like to get one of my postcards mailed to you. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a very nice postcard. <laughs> yes. um, just drop me a line with an address. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, as long as I got some left, I'll send them out in the mail to yeah. you. Uh, Q, thank well, you very much. Iraq War, Iraq War Heroes dot org. All sorts of information opens up from that page. Uh, a final thought for for Q here. Well, I just want to thank him for the work he's doing to bring attention to this and <laughs> to remind us that we really there are still people sacrificing for our freedom and that we need to move towards a more equitable uh, and respectful, good society. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that we need to remind remember that that's what the constitution it, it was it to the pursuit of happiness uh for those purposes mm-hmm. and for the general welfare according to the preamble of the constitution yeah. so that which is the well-being of the nation and that's where we should strive towards so thank you for for coming on the show Q yeah thank you for having me yes thank you Q oh, you do okay. a lot of good work we Q. appreciate it Q, thank you again. We'll keep in touch. Q Mop. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Good Bye-bye. Night. You too. Q Mop. <laughs> well, uh, Iraq.
IraqWarHeroes.org. A final thought here. Well, we had some uh, controversial issues and discussions on the show today. My goodness, I'm sure I might have gotten myself into hot water myself, but hopefully. (laughs) uh, But those are my opinions. Well, some, and I feel the was, history uh, bears it out. Yeah, well, uh, when, when, you, when you mentioned that naughty word, so, someone here was uh, quick with the delete button. And uh, so, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, 